Well, we're talking about freedom. It's a, we're doing a freedom series on Wednesday nights throughout the summer here. Uh, and we're just talking about different things that we're free from. And, uh, of course, John chapter 8, our keynote, a couple of keynote verses for this series, Gospel of John chapter 8. Notice what Jesus said here in verse well, actually, what it says in, in beginning in verse 31, then what Jesus says is, Then Jesus said to these, those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Notice you've got to continue in the word if you're going to experience the freedom that comes uh, from Christ. Amen. That Jesus gives. It's, it come, it's associated and tied in to the word of God, isn't it? And us receiving and hearing and walking in the word of God. Then down in verse 36, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, what does the Amplified of that verse, verse 36, uh, tells us, gives us another word that we've, he said, You are really and unquestionably free. Amen. Well, that's my desire for people that receive the word. And, uh, and the teaching of the word here at Harvest is, people, is for God's people, you, to be unquestionably free. Amen. Without a doubt, free in your life. So tonight we're going to talk about, we're talking about some different, different things and, uh, that we're free from. Tonight I want to talk about freedom from frustration. Freedom from frustration. Uh, you know, God wants us living a life of contentment and peace. Amen. That's his will, isn't it? And that's vital, really, uh, even in our walk of faith. If we're going to be effective in our faith and overcoming in our faith, we need to learn this principle of how to be free, learn this truth, how to be free from frustration and to walk in contentment and peace. You know, Colossians 3.15, Paul said, Let the peace of God rule in your life. Let that peace be the umpire, one translation says, in your life. Of course, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the fruit of the Spirit. One, one of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. Uh, m- mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. Jesus said in, in John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you. My peace. Not, the, not like the world gives, but the kind of peace that I have and I walk in. That's the kind of peace that's available for the believer so that we don't have to let our hearts be troubled. Amen. You know, we live in a world of multitude of voices. We live in the information age. And I know there are voices coming at us from all directions, all means, you know. Uh, And and I think we all know not all those voices are from God. And uh, if we're giving heed to these other voices that come into our life, and the enemy, enemy will make sure you get a lot of those different voices. Uh, if we g- continue to give heed to those voices, we're not going to be giving heed to the voice of the Lord in our life, how, what God is speaking to us, and that's going to create great frustration. And we live in a frustrated society. I mean, it's all around us. You can, I mean, you can, you can see it. You can sense it. Um, it's a very frustrated society, and the result of that is a lot of discouragement, a lot of disappointment, a lot of dissatisfaction, a lot of discontent in the world around us, in people around us, and, uh, and unfortunately even in, for Christians too often because they're allowing so many voices to dictate their actions and their thought life. And... Uh, and therefore, there are multitude, you know, there are multitude of facets of really of the things people can get frustrated about. Um, look in Second Samuel chapter thirteen in the Old Testament. Here, there are different causes for frustration. We're just going to look at a couple of things here tonight. That's all we have time for, but um, and I want to mention this is an an example here. Now, this is an extreme example, and. Uh, I'm not going to look at the whole story, but uh, it's about a man named Amnon here who um, 
he desired something that was outside the realm that God wanted him to desire. And I think that's safe to say because Amnon uh, ended up here raping a girl named Tamar. And we're not going to get into the full story of that, but uh, it says it. But I want you to see a word here that reveals it's a word we're going to see is common uh, in some of the scriptures we're going to look at that, uh, that mean that you could also describe it as a meaning of that word is frustration. It came to pass, uh, this is verse, verse 1, it came to pass after this Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed, that word vexed is a word that you could, one of the definitions of that is frustration. He was so frustrated that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But he, he devised this little, I'm not going to read the rest of this. He devised a little plan, though, where she could come. He would act like he was sick. She would come into his room, and he ended up forcing himself on her, raping her. And, uh, and then a lot of things went bad from there <laughs> for him, as you can well imagine. But, uh, but I want you to see, I just, the, the point was that word vexed. It means he was frustrated. Why? Because he was wanting something outside the parameters the will, the word of God for his life. When we start desiring things that are outside the realm of God's word, God's will, God's desires for our life, as I said, this was an extreme example, but it kind of makes the point, uh, that can become a major cause of frustration in our life is wanting something you cannot have. Wanting something you cannot have is a point of frustration. Desiring something inconsistent with God's will, God's plan, God's word for your life will produce frustration, which doesn't produce a blessing, which hinders your faith, hinders a plan of God for your life. And maybe it's something in the natural, maybe it is a, you know, uh, a possession, a home, a car, um, jewelry, you know, you can become unhappy, discontented by desiring, letting things be too important in your life and, and desiring them outside of the will of God. And I'm not, listen, we all, and, and I'm, I'm going to walk a line here because I mean, this is important uh, for people to understand. It is God's will for you to prosper. It's God's will for you to have a home if you desire a home. It's God's will for you to be blessed in this life. We teach that. We, we are very, you know, there's no if ands, or buts about it from the word of God. God wants you blessed. He wants you prospering. He wants you fulfilled in your job, in your career, uh, whatever he's called you to do. But we must understand this. There are seasons seasons in our lives there are seasons of where we are and there are season there's a season of where we're heading and they're different sometimes and uh where see where you're heading is your goal it is a godly desire it is a biblical desire it is something god has promised you it's it's a dream. It's something God's put in your heart to do. There are things out in front of you that are goals, and, and they're good things, godly things. Even temporal, natural things can be good and godly things. But where you are right now in the season of where you are instead of where you're going to be or looking to be, you need to be content and happy, and if you're going after, and if there, if if, there, if those things are causing you the things you might be desiring, if they're causing you to be frustrated, to be anxious, to be unhappy, then you're missing the boat, and it's really not faith. Amen. You need to be content where you are. If you don't remain content in that season where you are, 
it can create great frustration and you will not live an enjoyable, happy life today. And that's God's will for you. To be happy today. To be content today. Yes, with goals. Yes, with desires, promises, things you're believing God for. But you need to learn to be. In fact, you're going to hinder tomorrow. You're going to hinder the next season if you don't learn to be content in this season. Doesn't mean you're fully satisfied with where you'll ultimately be. But you still need to learn to be content where you are, happy where you are. That's God's will. He wants you enjoying life now. The will of God is for you to enjoy today. Whatever you're driving today. Whatever you're wearing today. God wants you to be content enjoying today whatever you do have or don't have amen Amen. god's will for you is to be contented to be happy today philippians chapter 4 philippians 4 verse 11 Paul says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. And Paul said, I had to learn this. How many of we all still learning some things? Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I am, whether in Alabama, Georgia, or Mississippi. (laughs) No, he's talking about, I mean, whatever state, those condition, whether, and he, he describes that, he talks about, in, in the in the next verse now about you know I, I know how to be a base I know how to abound I know how to I know how to be content when I'm hungry or when I'm not hungry when I when my you know when I'm not uh, when everything's not going hunky dory you know he said I've still learned how to be content that doesn't mean you just stay there and, and you never use your faith and certainly if God's provided something for you you need to be believing God for it. If, it, if your circumstance doesn't line up with the will of God. But I want you to understand what Paul was saying here. Whatever state, whatever season you could say, Paul said, I'm content. Whatever the season is. Because there could, there could be a season coming where I'm going to receive some things and step into some things and enjoy some things. Contentment. He said, I'm, I'm, I, whatever that season is, whatsoever state I am, they're with to be content. Contentment, I, a great definition of that is to be independent of external circumstances. Contentment is to be independent of external circumstances. You're not dependent on the external circumstances to determine whether you're going to be happy or not. Amen. See, the devil wants you to just up and down, you know, dependent, you know, on, on what, how this is going today, how that, how, you know, what you have today, what you don't have, what you, what you can do, can't do. Uh, he wants you living like that up and down, frustrated based on circumstances instead of having contentment. Oh, glory to God. That's a good thing. Contentment's a good thing. Whatever season you're in, it's a good thing. Thank God we don't have to let circumstances rule us. Thank God he's given us the ability to look at things, look at the unseen realm, uh, yeah, and, and, to, and to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our, of our faith, and not be dominated by the temporal things and have to look at those all the time to determine whether we're going to be in peace or not, in joy or not. Glory to God. See, we've got some spiritual eyes that can look beyond the natural seen realm. And we can be content. I said we can be content. You need to find contentment with your present. Listen to me. You need to find contentment with your present in order to find fulfillment for your future. You need to find contentment for your present in order to to find fulfillment for your future. Contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of what you already have. 
Amen. It doesn't mean we don't need to be desiring some things and believing God for things that we see are true in God's word for us. But we need to be contented while we're doing it with what we have. Contentment rejoices in what it has. Oh, praise God. You know, I, we already have the big stuff. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Woo, praise God. You can even try to kill, you can kill this body. It don't matter. What is that going to do? That's going to thrust me right into the presence of my Savior. I, I get to go to heaven. I get to, man, I mean, you may have done me a favor. If you, 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 shoot, this, you shoot this natural body, guess what? Woo, it ain't going to get worse for me. It's only going to get better. Paul said to go be with Christ is far better. Can't whip a guy like that. Amen. <laughs> We've already got the big stuff. Doesn't get any bigger than being a child of God. A new creation in Christ. So it's important. Listen to me. Don't post postpone happiness until. See, I know we teach faith around here, and it's, and it's good. We need to. It's, uh, it's vital. And, uh, and so we do need to be believing God, receiving things. But we, don't need to all, we also need to learn to be content right now, happy, because of who we are, what we have. And don't be postponing happiness until. Too many people, even Christians, have that until-itis. You're just not going to be happy until. They're just not going to be pleasant until. Kind of like if mom ain't happy, nobody's happy. And, but we never find out when mama gets happy. Some mamas, I don't know. That's just a, I know it's just a saying. It doesn't apply to any of you mamas in here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, I'm single and I'll just not be happy till I'm married. Well, listen, marriage is a blessing of the Lord. It's, it's, it's a good thing. Thank God. But if you're not a happy camper before you're married, <laughs> most likely you're not going to be a happy camper after you're married. That's just the facts. If you can't learn to be content now, you're going to make a mess later. And that mess is going to be on somebody else too. They get to experience it too. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy when I get that promotion on my job. No, you won't. Why can't you be happy now? Why can't you be happy now? Why can't you be content now? Yeah, believe God for believe God for job promotion. Believe God for something. Yeah, have some goals out there. That's fine. But be happy now. Enjoy the journey. I thank God I learned that. I learned that when I was, and, I, and I'm not saying it's always easy, but I learned it when I was, you know, a, a college graduate, a, a, a Bible school graduate. Then I start working for a little over minimum wage, putting labels on packages and in the basement of a ministry building and then about six months in i'm going what in the world am i doing i've got a wife i've got about, we're going to be having kids i'm like so i mean i know but i had to I, the, the, and the devil tries to mess with you about that you think well if i can just get this or just get that if i just go do this no you I, I, but i'd pray i thought well this is the will of god's where i'm supposed to be so i learned Praise God. I'm trusting in him. I'm, I'm going to rest in him here. He'll meet my need. I've just got some opportunities. So that's what you need to find out in some of the circumstances in seasons. Listen to me. There's seasons of life where you have opportunity to build character, to build faith, to learn to be content and still believe God. Keep your eyes on some things that you believe God for, but and get to, but you get to see God work in some of those seasons. 
I thank God, I thank God for some of the hard seasons I've gone through because I got to see God work. I got to learn some faith and be strong in some areas where, you know, if it were just hunky-dory, easy, just no, no big deal, just, you know. And if, was, if everything was just smooth as silk, there's some of the things I wouldn't have learned. So why not be happy now? Let's, let's rid, rid ourselves of postponing happiness until. What kind of testimony is that anyway? You got Christians that some folks don't want to be around them because they're always so unhappy. They're not content with anything. Then they ask, then they say, why don't you come to church with me? They say, no, I got enough problems of my own. (laughs) I don't need the ones you got too. No, we need witnesses out there who, who can, yeah, you're believing God for things, but you're, there's something about you. There's a joy, there's a peace, there's a contentment in your life. When, when people know, well, not everything in your circumstances is going great, but, wow, they seem to be operating in a peace. That's available. That's where we ought to be living. So it's vital to take advantage of the opportunities for growth, to invest in your character, invest in your faith, because then you're going to be better prepared when God starts opening some doors in the next season. You know, that's true even with marriage. Just be happy where you are and invest in you. Make you better so that you get better. Hallelujah. Amen. You get stronger and, and, and God will bless you because he's, he's only got your best interest in mind, darling. Hallelujah. Yes, we're going somewhere. From glory to glory, faith to faith. Yeah, we're moving forward. Yeah, God's got good things ahead. But enjoy the journey and take advantage of the journey. Mm. Preparation time is never wasted time in life. And there's a lot of times we're getting prepared for the next season. And there's preparation. And it's not always fun, not always in the natural. But see, if we learn to be content, learn to walk in the joy of the Lord, learn to use our faith in those times, wow, it's just just going to be better for the next season. It's it's, It's going to position us better in that preparation time. Preparation time may not have to be as long. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7 in the Amplified says God's not given us, you know, King James says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Notice he says God's not given us a spirit of timidity. You know, we don't need to be timid, drawing back from life. We, you know, we get because we get that word, you know, we get the word intimidation. That's why I looked at that version. The word intimidation comes from the word timidity. Because Satan tries to intimidate people. He'll try to intimidate you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you things. You know, you should be further along than you are. You could be a lot better this or that. Could be. Should be. You would be. Listen. Coulda, woulda, shoulda ain't in the word of God. (laughs) When the devil brings that stuff to you. You coulda, you shoulda, you woulda. Well, what is in the Word of God? Nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror through him that loves me. Praise God. He always causes me to try. In other words, there are things God has that he says about you right now that override and usurp the kind of thoughts that will come into your mind from the enemy to try to intimidate you and frustrate you. A lot of the purpose of intimidation is for frustration. Get you frustrated, get you anxious, get you under care, get you mad, get you, you know, just to where you're not enjoying this season of life. Enjoy the season of life that you're in. Be content. See, thank God. The good news is God can fix stuff where you messed up. God still has... He still has a bright future for you in spite of your mistakes. What Satan meant for evil, God brings a restoration for good. No, so, so 
See, we can still learn to be content because of God's grace and God's mercy. Have you ever wanted something in life that, but in your heart you knew that wasn't God's will for you? I think we all could probably say that at some point in life. We've wanted something that really wasn't, but we knew in our hearts it wasn't God's will for us. But you know what you need to do with that? Take, just, just take heart, rejoice, because that means God's just got something better for you. I said, God's just got something better for you. And see, that's why we have to trust him with our future. This is a big key to overcoming and getting free from frustration, trusting God with your tomorrows. Because it may not look like it's better at the time, but he knows God has, he, he, has, he knows your DNA. He put it in there. Amen. He knows the beginning from the end. So it comes down to a matter of trust. Trust that his will for you is better than that thing you may have desired. Amen. Trust his will for you is better. It's trust. It comes down, this frustration primarily comes down, uh, being free from it comes down primarily to trust. Yeah, it comes down to doing the will of God, but it comes down to trust. Trusting him to ultimately bring the right thing into your life. Even things that you desire, he'll put desires in you when you delight yourself in him. Glory to God. It was interesting, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Note that here's another uh, area where we can see why frustration came into someone's life. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, talking about Abraham and Lot. You know, they parted ways um, because Abraham and was so, you know, they were both so blessed. They were just, they weren't, they were so crowded. You know, they couldn't, wasn't enough room for both of them. So Abraham said, Lot, you choose where you want to go. Now, Abraham, I mean, Lot should have been smart enough to defer to the higher anointing. <laughs> Abraham said, no, Abraham, you, you decide, then I'll, I'll just kind of stay close where you are. If he'd have been smart, but he wasn't. He said, no, I, ooh, I've heard about that Sodom and Gomorrah over there. Nice land. Yeah, but a lot of problems. And uh, so, but I want you to see something here. Second Peter 2 Verse, uh, verse 7 says, and, uh, well, God delivered just Lot. But notice he was vexed with the filthy, really that's lifestyle, that word conversation. He was vexed with the filthy lifestyle of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing. How many of you know there Christians, there's some things you ought not be seeing and hearing? Lot, the Bible tells us in Genesis, he pitched his tent in Sodom. And that caused vexation because it says it vexed his righteous soul from day to day. He was frustrated, vexed. That word vexed again. I told you that's a word that can mean frustration. It brought great frustration in his life. Why? Because he pitched his tent in Sodom. That's what the Genesis tells us. Notice he got a little too close and started seeing some things and hearing some things that he shouldn't. Amen. See, if, listen, if we try to get too close to the world, you're going to end up being frustrated. Now, listen, we're to be examples to the world, a light to the world. We need to be lifting people. We, but how I many know we don't need to be seeing how many beers we can swig down so that we can just kind of relate. We're cool, man. I'm a cool Christian. No, you're an idiot. And you're pitching your tent in Sodom, and it's going to bring vexation of soul, and you're going to lose your testimony, trying to be so close to the world. That's one reason for frustration. That's why a lot of Christians are frustrated. They're 
they're seeing things and hearing things they ought not be seeing and hearing. Well, I can go see one. I can see that kind of movie on uh, HBO or what. I can I can go see that and I, I can see it and it doesn't bother me. Well, bless God, it should. That's a good sign. There's something wrong if it don't bother you. Well, glory to God. I ought to get more amens from a Wednesday night crowd. I'm teaching the Wednesday night folks here. I ought to get a. But you got, you got a lot of folks in the church now thinking, well, we got, man, we got to be cool. And I could go on and on about this, but I'm not, you know. Oh, dear Lord, that's just ignorance gone to seed. Thinking we got to be just like the world so that we can relate to them or somehow witness. No. No, we can, we're to love the world. We're to love sinners. We're, but we're to be setting a, an example. We're to be a light of righteousness. Glory to God of, of what it means to not pitch your tent in Sodom anymore, but pitch your tent under the shadow of the Almighty. And the peace and the joy and the contentment that comes from that. Let me, let me make this statement. The holiest are the happiest. Just bank it. Don't, there's no other way around that. It's biblical. It's true. I could give you an example. The holiest are the happiest. The most sanctified are the most satisfied. In other words, they're the least frustrated believers, the ones that are the holy, the ones that are that just living for God and, and, and not pitching their tent as close to they can get as to Sodom, you know. Ask Lot how that worked out for him. How'd that turn out for you, Lot? Well, my wife turned into a big pillar of salt. Look in Judges chapter 16. A couple more thoughts here tonight. Just a couple more thoughts. Hallelujah. Look at a man named Samson for a moment. We're talking about how to be free from frustration. Well, we've got to do the will of God. We need to trust God with our future. We need to not pitch our tent by Sodom. That means we live for God. We don't, we don't live to try to appease the world. See how close to the, being like the world we can get? Now, that has nothing to do with clothes and things. You know, you know it doesn't mean you have to dress back in the 1960s and things like that. People, some people have so many goofy ideas what holiness is. Amen. But it does mean you don't wear clothes that everybody can see most of what you got. There should be more amens for this holiness preacher here tonight. <laughs> Y'all aren't used to me preaching holiness sermons, are you? Well, I don't, you know, I mean, to me, if you get people excited about God, that takes care of most of the holiness. But sometimes you have to just Shell down the corn, I guess. A little bit. Judges 16. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. Thank God for his grace. Thank God we can go to him and get cleaned up and get free from frustration. That's, there's an answer to every one of these types of frustration. There's victory available. But there's a man named Samson. He got hooked up with this Philistine woman named Delilah. She wondered, what is your secret to your strength? Why are you so strong? Because he was in covenant with God, you know. And he had the super, just supernatural feats, just killing Philistines. And they, no, no Philistine could match up to him. But uh, let's pick it up here. They were, you know, they were, uh, here they were laying in bed together. Because this was his, even though he had great exploits, he was, how many of you know, you can't kill Philistines in the day and sleep with, sleep with the Delilahs at night. Here's that holiness preacher again. <laughs> I know we live in a world where everybody's like, hey, we, we, we can sleep together. What's the big deal? Just get married. And, I'll, and, and it'll be okay. Well, hallelujah. God will forgive you. But 
But don't think you can keep sleeping with Delilah's and kill Philistines the next day. And I'm not just talking about in that realm of life, sexual realm. I'm talking about Samson was a man. He represented a man who could not control his flesh. And people can do that in different means, different areas of life where they're out of control, where their flesh dominates them. and uh, They're not walking in the spirit. Amen. Which is available to us. Let's pick it up at verse 9. There were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, unto Samson, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. He broke, uh, he, he broke the whist as a thread of bow. I'm sorry, where am I? Am I yeah, I'm chapter 16. Okay. And uh, Delilah said to him, Samson, behold, you've mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou might be bound. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I want, and let me start at verse 14. I don't want to read all this for sake of time. She fastened it with the pen, said unto him, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. He woke out of his sleep, went away with the pen of the beam. And, and with the web, she said to him, now, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? So she's, you can hear the whine in her voice, right? You've mocked me these three times. You told me where, in, uh, you've not told me where your great strength lies. Because he kind of me- messed around with her for a little while there about it. And he came, it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that, his, notice this, his soul was vexed. Again, we see that word vexed, don't we? He got so frustrated with her, with her just bothering him about this. He finally got so frustrated, he told her all his heart, verse 17, the idiot, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor on my head, for I've been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I'll become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that, she told all that she, he had told all, all his heart. She sent, called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shown me all his heart. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought money in their hand. She made him sleep on her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of it. He got him a haircut right there, boy. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Notice, so he'd given in to the frustration. Why? Because he was out of the will of God to begin with. See, when you get out of the will of God, frustration will be easy to, for the enemy to, get, to bring into your life. He can harass you and you'll give in to it. He'll harass you because you've pitched your tent in Sodom. You just, or you've gotten out of the will of God. Frustration then causes bad decisions. Amen. So what Samson should have accomplished, he never did. What he should have been, he never was. What he ultimately should have been. Amen. Thank God, you know, we have, we have authority over frustration. And we can be free from it. Put up real quick, Numbers 33, 55, up on, on if you would. This is, uh, I just thought of this. Uh, this is what... God through most told, told children, if you'll not drive out the inhabit, if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, because if you don't drive out all those ites, <laughs> Canaanites, Moabites, Perizzites, termites, parasites, then it shall come to pass that those which remain, you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes, thorns in your sides, and they'll vex you. If you don't learn to take authority over these things that are that will keep you from doing the will of God, keep you from trusting God, keep you from enjoying life now, if you don't take authority over those ites, <laughs> amen, until itis, you need to take authority over that. You have authority. Take authority. If not, they'll vex you. They'll frustrate you. And cause you not to enjoy the promised land that's yours. But thank God, through Jesus, we're free. I said, through Jesus, we're unquestionably free. But we still have to do what? We got to walk in the Spirit. We got to put that first. Lord, I'm walking with you. I'm not, I'm not walking according to the world. Not, and if we miss it, we, we ask forgiveness. We, Paul said, I've learned to be content. We got, we got to grow, continue to get our minds renewed and learn and grow in these things. 
You start finding yourself frustrated because you don't have this, don't have that. Use your faith, but then say, no, bless God, I am content right now. I'm going to be content right where I am. Because if I'm contented in this season, I'll find fulfillment in the next one. And you got to trust God to your, with your future. Trust him with your tomorrows. Oh, I, but I wish I had that. Trust him. He's got, he's got the right plan for you. He knows your DNA. He's got the things ahead for you. He, he's got good stuff for you. He's only got good plans for you. Why are you so frustrated with right now? Amen. He's got the right situation about to open up. And I'm speaking this now. About, he's, got, he's got the right divine connection that's ready to step into your life, but he needs you to rest in him. <laughs> Just so, whoo, I give that to you, Lord. Doesn't take five years to do that. Doesn't take five months. Doesn't even take five minutes. Just do it right now. I give that to you, right? Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry I've been so frustrated about that. I've let that hinder my joy. I've let it rob my peace. Father, I'm content. Contentment is a choice. I'm content because I've chosen to rest my tomorrow in God right now. I've given it to him. I've given, you've got the next season ready and prepared, Father. You've got it. I'm going to be content in this season. I'm going to keep investing in this season. And yeah, with goals and using my faith for tomorrow, but I'm investing in my character. I'm investing in my spiritual walk. I'm investing in, 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 my, in, in, in being strong in the Lord right now. So we need to get free from that frustration. Get free. You take authority over those ice before they vex you. You don't want them vexing your tomorrow. Because every time we see somebody get vexed, they made bad decisions, got out of the will of God. Whew, man, stuff you don't want. <laughs> Thank God we're free. Amen? Amen? In Jesus, we can be as free from being so frustrated about tomorrow and why I don't have this and why, why can't I have that and oh why you know and comparing you know there's another one of those ites comparison itis so and so's got it why not shut up God's got something better for you that fits you he's got a tailor made plan just for you amen praise God